Hey everyone and welcome back to Ontario Cryptids. Today marks episode 190 and every fifth episode I'd like to cover some clips that you may not have seen before and tell at least one encounter story. Before we get started though, I would like to verbally wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving weekend. I know I posted about it, but you know, I have the opportunity to do it verbally. So I hope you guys had a fantastic Thanksgiving weekend and got out there and did some Black Friday shopping. If you have an encounter story that you would like to share, then please forward your stories to ontariocryptids at gmail.com. I would be honored to share your story with like-minded people. Now sit back and relax as we begin with today's episode. This first clip comes from a YouTube channel called Dee's Dark Adventure. It was posted on June of this year. The story goes that a sheriff is called out to investigate a strange sound being heard. When he gets to the location, this is what he finds. As he's searching around, you can hear something moaning in the distance. As the sheriff just stumbled upon a crawler. Let's take a look at this one more time. It gets up and looks like it's running away, but it's hard to tell because we don't see the end of this video. Please leave a comment as to what you think this is. This one showed up on Reddit a few days ago as a Dogman encounter. I did some digging and found that it's a video on Dee's Dark Adventures YouTube channel. It was uploaded back on August 13th of this year. The description is of a homeless man camping in his truck who was woken up by a strange sound and something bumping his truck. Unfortunately, he realizes that he left his window down and this is what he captures. Let me know your thoughts in this video, but personally, it looks like a mountain lion to me. The other day I stumbled on Xander Budnick's YouTube channel. Now Xander is an adventure outdoorsman living in Ontario. I was watching one of his videos and roughly 10 minutes in, he's setting up his sleeping bag when he hears this. Take a listen, and also, take a look at his eyes. Now, let's watch this again. And if you take a look at his eyes, he's extremely freaked out about what he heard. Okay. 
Hey, Odie. That's a weird one. What was that noise? Was that an owl? Never heard that one before. Almost sounded human. Oh! Oh! oh. Coyote? Probably a coyote. So he ponders on what he hears, and his first explanation is it's a coyote, and then an owl. But what I find most interesting was his next comment, where he states that it almost sounded human. And then he proceeds to mimic the sound himself. Take a look. And what are your thoughts on what he heard? Leave a comment below. Coyote? That's a weird one. What was that noise? Was that an owl? Never heard that one before. Almost sounded human. Oh! Oh! oh. Coyote? Probably a coyote. This encounter takes place the first week of September. We're going to be heading to Red Gut Bay, Ontario, and the nearest town is Fort Francis. What I saw when I was 14 years old is still hard to believe to this very day. It was around the first week of September. I headed out to do some bird hunting like I had done years before with my grandfather. On this day, he figured that I was old enough and wise enough to do this on my own now. So I went to the same old skitter trail that I had hunted since I can remember. I went out at approximately 7 a.m. with my 410 shotgun and with my little mixed dog, which is very aggressive and had run-ins with bears, moose, deer, and everything else that lives throughout the bush in northern Ontario, Red Gut Bay, Rainy Lake, since we were both young in the vast forest. I had been hunting grouse for about an hour or two with no results, which was very odd for these trails, which had always carried a large population of birds. I tried three or four different trails when my dog began to act very nervous and skittish. On the fourth and, and most northerly trail, I knew something was near, most likely a bear, since I was starting to smell what I can only describe as a wet dog mixed with garbage smell. The smell was more intense the further up I walked the trail. Within seconds, my mean little hunting dog, which would and had chased or fought off anything we had come across before, because she was so protected of me, had suddenly took off like a greyhound in a race back down the trail, when I had just started to call her name, Tina. That's when I heard the tall grass about three feet high in those overgrown trails begin to shuffle. Next, I saw what I can only describe as a huge man-like creature, which was at least twice as big and tall as any bear I had ever seen before or seen since. This creature, what I can now call a Bigfoot, stood up. It glanced at me for a second, then calmly crossed into the other side of the trail in what I think was maybe two or three steps. I was six feet tall at the time. It would have taken me half a dozen or so steps to cross over that kind of ground with old logs and rocks hidden under the grass. It made almost no noise as it did so. The most outstanding feature on this creature was the size of its upper body, but mostly the dark, almost grayish black eyes. Large ridges over its eyes where the eyebrows would be and big brownish red lips. Yes, I was that close and scared to death, even too scared to think about running or using the shotgun that was in my hands. I think I stood there for a minute or so, I think maybe longer frozen with fear. The thing that made me snap out of it was the thought of where my dog was, my best friend that had took off so quickly. I snapped out of it and ran very fast back down the trail. I heard large branches being broken as if it was running from me as fast as I was running from it. I asked myself a hundred times what the hell that could have been. Now I'm certain it was a Bigfoot with its reddish black hair or fur and walking upright with human features, there was no way it could have been anything else, period. 
I have kept this secret for a long time, not even telling my grandparents when I got back to the cabin. I was so stressed about this that I did not hunt for two years after that, and I have never gone back to those trails since. Well, that's going to be it for today, everyone, and I hope you all enjoyed these clips and encounter story. It sounds like he had an encounter with a Sasquatch, and I'm not surprised that his dog took off like that. If these stories reminded you of an encounter you've had, then forward them to OntarioCryptids at gmail.com. I would be honored to share your story on this channel. Just a quick reminder that I am offering OC memberships. Please check out my membership video to learn more about my perks. I would like to thank my current members, Jim, Teresa, and Shell. Oh, and don't forget to visit the OC merchandise store. Treat yourself or a loved one now that Christmas is, is right around the corner. Thank you all for listening until the end. I truly appreciate it. Please hit the like button on your way out and smash that subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Have a great weekend and I hope to see you all next week right here on Ontario Cryptids.